I'm Todd Graff. And I'm Justin Zarr, and I want to welcome you to this month's episode of Bowhunter Die. It's the middle of the summer, which means the temperatures are high. Our team is out enjoying some off-season practice and preparing for this fall. This month, we have a variety of information to share with you, along with an amazing hunt for a monster buck brought to you from our friends at Tinks. So let's join John Mueller as he conquers Horseshoe Lake with a bow and takes to the shore for some exciting bow fishing action. This is May the 6th, Friday evening. Getting ready to head out and do a little bow fishing. Ready to head over to Horseshoe Lake in Madison County, Illinois. See if I can stick a few fish tonight. I hear this lake is full of carp, buffalo, even got some big head carp in it. Got the boat all rigged up, got lights on it. Time to head out, see what we can do. Got that one. Good job, baby. I got two. <laughs> Check it out. Two in one shot. Another oh, garb, only one this time. Got something. Two silver carp out of the canal. Two at once. Indigar. Right. Got a big one this time. Big head carp. That's why they call them a big head. Their heads are huge and their mouths are big too. They can filter all the little plankton and stuff out of the water. Two fish with one shot. Now that's pretty impressive. Now if I can only figure out how to do that while bow hunting this fall with my two Illinois tags, I'd be really set. For those of you who are interested in learning more about bow fishing, make sure you check out our bow fishing section right here on bowhunting.com. There's a lot of great information to help you get started. Next up, we're going to join Neil McCullough and Grant Jacobs as they sight in their new Matthews bows for their upcoming antelope hunt. They're also going to show us just how easy it is to use the NAP Quick Fletch product. All right, it's July 12th, uh, dog days of summer, and uh, Grant and I are taking an afternoon off to do a few things to tune up our bows and we're actually going to be refletching some arrows today using the NAP Quick Fletch. We're going to walk you through kind of how we do that and um, it's really a pretty easy process. And then after we get our arrows fletched, we're going to head out to a 3D course and do a little shooting to practice for some upcoming hunts that we have. Let's see how they fly. One of which is going to be out to Wyoming to hunt antelope and it should be should be a, it's a first for us, so it should be pretty exciting. So stick with us. This is the NAP Quick Fletch. It's actually a pretty ingenious one-piece design. Um, they're pretty simple to to uh, install. Actually, you just take the shaft of an arrow. Uh, these are Easton Axis arrows that I'm using this year. It's got the knock and the insert already in there. All we need is the fletch. Pretty simple. They just slide on. You get them to the point where you uh, where you want to attach them. The, the key here is to boil water, dip them into the water, and um, 
Yeah, other than that, it's pretty simple. They dry fast and they're ready to shoot the same day. So that's, uh, that's what we're gonna do next. All right, well, we just finished up. Literally, it took us probably 15 minutes. I'm just putting some fuel points on my newly fletched arrows, and um, no woo, no mess, uh, no fuss. It took 15 minutes, and like I said, now we're, we're out to the range to shoot these arrows. Less than, you know, within an hour, we'll be shooting arrows that we just fletched. So, uh, really a pretty sweet deal. We're excited to, uh, to be using these this year, and we're off to the range to, uh, to give them a try. Out here having a blast, just shooting, trying a bunch of different ranges, different elevations, all that kind of stuff. It's just good practice, something you can't get at a standard range. And perfect day for it. We're the only ones out here, it's awesome. Here's a 40, I'll take that every time. 70 yards, Matthew Z7, look at that, bang. Good shot. This course is awesome, a lot of good, a lot of good range. We love the 70 yard shot, so. Now it's time to get in the woods and get the trail cameras up and get ready for the real deal. For those of you who aren't using the Quick Fletch product, you're really missing out. Neil showed us just how easy they are to apply to your arrows. They're extremely durable and very accurate. I would definitely suggest that you guys check them out if you're interested in refletching some of your old arrows. I know those guys are really looking forward to their antelope hunt coming up next month. Hopefully they're gonna be successful. Now we're headed down to central Illinois to meet up with Frankie Clark, Clinton Fawcett, and their good friend Roger Cox for our first filmed bullfrog hunt ever. Check this out. Well, we're up here at uh, Canton, Illinois, up here on Double Clutch Farms. We got Roger with us. He helps us video a little bit. Um, they're draining a the wetland, and it's frog season, and we have nothing to do. So we got the judo points out, and we're going to shoot a few frogs. We've got a booner spotted. Frankie's going to put the slip on him and come up over the hill. Strike one. Pretty good, actually. We did a little better than what we thought. Some small ones, but like shooting them small is a little bit, a little bit harder. We're having some pretty good eating. Frog legs. But it's a good way to sharpen your skills during the summer. Frog season's in. You might as well take advantage of it. Get some judo points. 
go out and have some fun. Now that seems like a lot of fun. Not only did they get a good day of practice out in the field, they also got a nice tasty treat out of the deal. I wish I was there to try those frog legs with you guys. Now we're gonna head over to Virginia and check in with Cody Altizer. He's been hard at work on his food plots all summer long, hoping that his hard work's gonna pay off with a shot at a mature buck this fall. It's a pretty cool day we're having in the woods so far today. We had a little bout with the black snake. Oh. We're doing some work on our fruit trees, planting food plots, and we've also found a little turkey nest here, literally right beside uh, one of our fruit trees we were spraying. It scared the daylights out of me and my cameraman uh, when the hen, when she took off, I mean, we, were, we were literally right on top of it. We were five feet from, from the hen when she took off, but it's pretty cool seeing six little baby turkey eggs, you know, right, right, right around your hunting property. Let you know you're doing something right. Uh, this is pretty exciting. For only the second year of growth, this peach tree is already producing uh, little baby peaches. If you take careful consideration into where you plant your fruit trees, you can really accelerate their growth and make sure they produce you know, at the age they're supposed to. This particular place where this tree we planted it, it gets sunlight you know, almost all day, which is the reason why this, this peach tree has got you know, little baby peaches. Well guys, it's uh, June 13th, back here on my property in Virginia, and we're just going to do some uh, fruit tree maintenance today. Our second project today is we are going to plant some corn by hand and uh, for reasons that you're probably not used to. Behind me is a food plot that we've been working on uh, ever since you know, February. We've been really excited about it. It continues to do very, very well despite uh, dry conditions we've had here in Virginia the last couple weeks. But the problem is the food plot's right there in my hunting camp is literally 30 yards from where I'm standing right now. And in order to successfully hunt these deer coming to and from this food plot, uh, we need to block off their vision of the camp and all human activity. So we're going to plant a couple rows of corn to uh, just create a buffer so they can feel safe out in the food plot during daylight hours. If they eat it, you know, excellent. But, you know, the, the goal today is to get this corn in the ground, pray for rain, obviously, but keep the deer from seeing human activity around this hunting camp so they'll feed in the food plot in daylight hours. We have a little potato plow, a little one prong plow we're just gonna drag behind this tractor just to create some little form of row and we're just gonna drop the corn seeds in by hand. We're gonna drag this, turn the dirt over, put the corn in the ground. Part of it if you wanna shoot big deer is uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. It's come this fall, it will be worth it and it will increase some of our chances of shooting you know a three-year-old buck thanks to this food plot but we're just going to finish covering up these seeds by hand with a rake whatever it takes then we're going to get out of here and call it a day Judging from that footage and a couple of the conversations I've had with Cody recently, I know he's extremely optimistic about harvesting a good buck this fall. It's really going to be interesting to see how those corn rows that he just planted affect daytime movement in that particular food plot. So you're definitely going to want to check back come fall and see how Cody does. Now let's head to Minnesota where we'll check in with Tom Lester as he puts out some monster racks, mineral stations, and scouts for some velvet bucks. It's June 25th. I'm down here at my lease in southeast Minnesota. We've taken care of putting up a feeder today. Yesterday we took care of some uh, mineral sites, checked some cameras. Today we're going to sit out here and look for some velvet bucks. We had some, a group of seven come out down below yesterday. We're up to five deer now. Close to 180 inch mainframe 10 with Five stickers off the bases, big split brows, hence the name. It's a little crick bottom, very steep and narrow. It's only about 40 yards across from here to, to the other side. 
right here where these fallen trees are, where that's where we're gonna set the ground blind. We'll just sprinkle some. Their deer just come in, they, they come in and hammer it. You know, we've, we've been using this for a long time and we've had great results. It's really changed the, the herd that we've got here. Um, a lot uh, bigger deer, you know, more structure, uh, a lot of character starting to grow on the racks. So if you're looking for a good mineral supplement, Monster Racks Trophy Minerals, that's, that's the way to go. We're going to take some of our Monster Racks Whitetail Magnet and we're just going to spray it in there. It's a sweet smell, definitely draws the deer in, and then they love it. So we're going to do this just to give them a little extra attractiveness. Um, we get 10 times the pictures and we've got it set up to, to go off for just three seconds in the morning and three seconds in the evening just to, to bring them in here. Um, so we're going to get this finished up and then we're going to set up a, a new mineral site. There's no question about it. The Monster Rack Minerals sure can draw on the deer. I can tell you personally, my spots in Wisconsin have been getting hit extremely hard and I've been getting some great photos. That was a nice buck you saw out there in the bean field, but hopefully this fall you can get a lot closer than that. Next up, we're going to check in with Dan Schaefer as he prepares one of his killing food plots in the north woods of Wisconsin. All right, what we have here is just a small, what we're going to call a kill plot. It's about a quarter of an acre, 200 yards off the main road, about 150 yards from a major bedding area. Big bucks, there's, there's, every year we see big bucks in this area. There's a ton of rubs we found here this winter when we were doing our scouting. And what we're doing is we're gonna set up this kill plot. We're gonna cut off some of these trees right here. It's just a little field in the middle of nowhere. It's, uh, there's a big, big beaver pond just south of me. Those deer are gonna be coming around the edge of that beaver pond. And hopefully they stop in here, get a little snack as they're heading out to the big fields about a half mile to the east of us here. So hopefully we kill a big buck here this fall. Time to break out the sod buster. This, uh, this hasn't been plowed up for probably almost 50 years, I bet crazy 50 years is a long time there's gonna be some heavy sod it's gonna take this evening it's already 7 30 and hopefully uh, all day tomorrow we can by the end of the day tomorrow hopefully have this all busted up dragged out all nice and smooth and ready to go up got her nice and tilled nice and smooth it took a little bit more work than we thought it was going to because it's pretty heavy clay but uh, we got her and now it's time to lime it bring the pH up a little bit we're gonna put about 800 pounds down here on this uh, little quarter acre so let's get to it Dan's been putting a lot of hard work into his food plots this summer, hoping that it's going to pay off for this fall. In the big woods in north central Wisconsin, sometimes having a good fall food source can mean the difference between success and failure. I know that some of Dan's hard work is already starting to pay off as he's got trail camera pictures of a couple nice bucks he's hoping to run into come October. Our last segment for this show comes from our friends over at Tinks. What you're about ready to see is bow hunter Barry Kern harvest the number two archery typical buck ever taken in Pennsylvania over Tink's Power Scrape. Wait till you see how he uses this product to lure in this buck. Hey, this is my Pennsylvania number two state record here. 175 and 3 eighths. You, you just don't see a deer like this around here. Definitely was an awesome deer. Uh, and I also got this deer killed on video too. Probably the, one of the largest deer ever to be taken in the Northeast to be self-filmed by a hunter. Check out this hunt.
I just smoked a 150 inch 10 point in Pennsylvania. Yes! This deer come down a ridge right on the trail just like clockwork. I didn't know he was in here. Didn't have any kind of trail pictures of him. And uh, he come down here, hit this scrape. Let me show you what I put in this scrape. Tinks. Power scrape, this stuff works. It doesn't have any kind of a scent, but the bucks like it. You just saw him, he just hit that scrape right there. And uh, I smoked him 20 yards. What a buck. He only ran 25 yards. Big old scrape, look at that. Licking branch right there. My God, look at this deer. I hope all them bow hunters out there can get him this big, my God. He's got double split brow tines. Look at this. Let's count him up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen with a little kicker off his back G2. Look at that thing. My gosh. Woo, the old Matthews DXT. What a buck. He's bigger than 150. It's a 160 inch deer right here. We got to get a tag on him. I got some people coming. My wife Fauna and my buddy Ryan. I just called a couple other friends and uh, we're going to celebrate this buck because this is a giant. Wow, what an impressive animal. Congratulations to Barry on a buck of a lifetime. That hunt just goes to show you how hunting over scrapes during the mid-October can really pay off. That buck was absolutely hammering that scrape right where he used the Tink's Power Scrape product. If you're looking for a product to use this fall to help increase your odds, you absolutely need to use this product right here, Tink's Power Scrape. I can tell you right now, this fall, I'll be using it, and I'll tell you what, for those of you who like using trail cameras, freshen up your scrapes, and you will see more daytime activity using this product. Well, that's all the action for this month's episode of Bowhunter Die. Be sure to check back next month as we're going to bring you an inside exclusive look at the Matthews Archery Facility in Sparta, Wisconsin. We're also going to bring you some tips on tree stand safety and placement, and most importantly, we're going to start showing you some of the hit list bucks that we're going to be chasing this fall. That's right. Hunting season is right around the corner. Several of our team members are going to Wyoming to chase antelope next month, so you won't want to miss that action. In the meantime, don't forget to check out our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash bowhunting. We want to see some of the bucks you're chasing this fall, so make sure you upload those pictures to our wall. Also, we just recently upgraded our forums. Make sure you stop in and join in the conversation. There's a lot of great information, so check it out. See you guys next month. Bow hunter die, we don't limit ourselves to hunting whitetails. We go after anything. dedicated we are dedicated